in 1971, a long time ago now, and there was a terrible, terrible genocide in Bangladesh. Uh, in those days, the international community ignored it. it. There was a concert for Bangladesh organized by George Harrison and Ravi Shankar, which put it on the world agenda, but there was no accountability for the war criminals, for those who had massacred the intellectuals who might have given a start to the new nation of Bangladesh. So even 40 years later, it's important for a country to face down its own demons. And so it was a good thing that the Bangladesh government finally set up a tribunal. Although the main perpetrators, the Pakistani army chiefs, weren't available because Pakistan is now another country, it was at least possible to prosecute the collaborators. And that was why this tribunal was set up. The United Nations, I was going to say, was prepared to uh, lend a hand by providing experts, by providing judges, by providing funding, which in a poor country was uh, seemed is really important if you're going to do this exercise properly. And you know what? The government rejected that. We have this paradox that although the court was set up entirely properly for a legitimate objective, uh, we seem to have reached a stage where what it is doing is uh, ordering the execution of the government's main opponents. They are mainly from the Jamaat, which is an Islamic political group, uh, but also a number of former ministers of the BNP which is the main opposition grouping. It has sentenced 14 defendants to death, executed one of them, a man named Moller. The people it is sentencing to death, not coincidentally, are the political leaders of the main opposition parties. So uh, one has the spectacle of a government prosecuting its opposition and the opposition leaders being uh, ordered to be executed by the court, and that's not satisfactory. So I've studied the reports, all the court reports and judgments, and have concluded that the death sentences have, in fact, been passed unlawfully. And I hope that as a result of my report, uh, they will be commuted. The tribunal didn't have to impose the death penalty. It imposes a sentence that is just and proper. And given that, the prime perpetrators of this genocide were the generals of the Pakistani army. Then uh, what they were dealing with were collaborators whose actions might have been pretty vile but were not on the same level as the chief perpetrators, the generals. I make a number of uh, criticisms of what strikes me by international standards uh, to be uh, unfair procedures. I think the UN should take over the process. The UN was pathetic back in 1971. It didn't do anything about the genocide. It should have done and didn't. But now I think it is quite appropriate that it should take over the work of the tribunal, perhaps seek to uh, indict some of the Pakistani generals who are still alive and bear responsibility for it, and uh, that it should be proceed according to international justice standards. I think that the most urgent and important step is to demand the commutation of the 14, tomorrow it will be 15, death sentences on political opposition figures. Firstly, because the, they should not have been imposed, they were imposed in breach of international law with no provision for uh, mercy for, for mercy committees uh, in breach uh, or by the interpretation of a law which made them virtually mandatory, I think, for those uh, legal reasons, but also for humane reasons. When Muller was executed, over 200 people were killed in demonstrations against his execution, and I think that as this year progresses, as more executions uh, take place, there will be more demonstrations, more people killed.